These are two of the MLA30 plus antennas. You can barely make out the wire loops. At the base of each loop is a white box. See the wires are connected to the side of the box. Each antenna has a piece of plastic to form the loop. That's not included, you have to furnish that yourself. Out of the bottom of the white box is a piece of very thin coax which I have a drip loop formed and then it runs to the top of the handrail. These two antennas are mounted at right angles to each other. Uh, this one is a east-west orientation and this one is a north-south. The other end of the coax leading from the antenna it's about, I don't know, 15 meters long, 10 meters, connects to this SMA connector labeled antenna. This port goes to the receiver. Why do we do this? Because this is a little box that takes 5 volts from a micro US micro B connector. It's called a biasing T. This 5 volts is boosted to 12 volts internally and placed on the center of this, well it's placed across this coaxial connector. There's a capacitor between these two that prevents the DC from going to the receiver. A biasing T, so picture a T with a capacitor in the center and a voltage connection on one side of the capacitor. So this is how the amplifier at the antenna base is powered. They use this piece of coax for RF coming down from the antenna as well as power going up to the antenna from this box. This is the bottom half of the case. This is the top half. They look identical except the top half does not have holes in it. I'm going to get rid of these bumps. I wish they would not include them. Just I'm going to take them out and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Because I have two antennas, I'm going to need two bias T's. And then I'm going to need to switch the receiver between the two bias T's. No RF switch. I envision putting the bias T's here, and I'll just do that with double sided tape, uh, foam tape. Here I'm going to have to drill some holes and mount this up on standoffs because I, I don't want to use a piece of coax here. And this is not a bulkhead fitting. I'm going to use this as a bulkhead fitting, but a bulkhead fitting is normally longer. And for that purpose, on the rear, I'm going to have, of course, it'll be this way. I'm going to have the north-south oriented antenna, east-west antenna, a 5-volt coaxial jack. When I pick the standoffs for this, I'll adjust the height of this hole relative to the bottom of the enclosure. Here's what I mean by getting rid of those standoffs. I wanted to do that because I wanted to put these things here, these bias tees, and with the standoffs it would have just been goofy. Now that we have a flat bottom, I can just stick this down with double-sided tape. Now 
And there we go. As I usually do when I make these enclosures, I've drawn up a full size set of templates. Uh, the templates with the center lines on them are drilling templates or cutting templates. In this case, everything's round. The other two templates are, uh, will end up being the front and back labels of the panel. The cutting and drilling template, I use the outside lines to cut. On the front and rear panels, I use the inside lines. Now the way you use these templates, before you put the glue between the paper and the uh, plastic, carefully line the template up and hold it in place. Then peel back the template a little bit. I really prefer this. Uh, it's double-sided. I get it on eBay. I can't tell you what the search parameter is. Then fold down the template. It should stick at this point, but what I'm going to do is move my clamp things over here and then do the same thing to the other side. That way you're not trying to lay the thing down on the plastic with the glue in place and get it centered. Line it up, clamp it, glue half of it, then glue the other half. This completes the RF wiring. Uh, each external antenna connection, there's two of them of course, is routed to one of the uh, bias T's to the antenna input. They're the black pieces. And then these uh, tan pieces uh, that in indicate to receiver are going to the inputs of this switch. So this is the RF portion. I'm going to complete the power wiring probably in the next video.